We left off with this bland enemy. It takes damage and dies, but there's little indication. So let's fix that before we move forward. We're going to start by adding a hit effect. So we'll create a new particle effect. We're going to zero out its position, and we'll name this something like gun hit. We'll make the duration like half a second. We'll untick looping. The lifetime will also be half a second. For start speed, we'll go with 10. For the start color, we'll go with a dark red. We want gravity, so we'll use 1.5. Simulation space is world. Then we'll expand a mission. We'll set its rate over time to zero. And instead, we'll add a burst of 15 particles or so. So that all looks good. We're going to turn this into a prefab, but first we'll make a folder for our prefabs. Then we'll just drag this gun hit inside the prefab folder. And then we can go back to our hierarchy and delete the gun hit. So for now our enemy is going to be in charge of spawning the gun hit particle. So we'll go into our enemy script. Then at the top we'll say public game object. Gun hit effect. And we're going to drag this in the inspector onto our enemy script. And then down in here where we take damage, we can say instantiate. And this is going to spawn it. And what we want to spawn is our gun hit effect. And we want it to spawn at our transform position. And quaternion.identity is just a fancy way of saying no rotation. This is not a good method, but it's going to work for now. You can see our hit effects keep piling up in the hierarchy and we'll be using a pull-in system later, but for now this is fine. Now we want to add audio to the gun, and just like the hit effect, this is only temporary and we'll be doing this a better way later. So first we're going to make a new audio folder, and I found the actual Doom gun sound effect, but any gun sound effect will work, so just drag it in. And then we'll go to our player, and then the gun and we'll add a new component and this component is going to be an audio source. Once that's up here on the audio clip we're going to click this circle and we're going to select our Doom gun sound. So the only thing we need to do to this is untick play on awake and reduce the audio volume a bit. I usually use 0.1 to start. So we're going to go back into our gun script and inside the fire method is where we're going to play this audio. And we're going to be lazy. We're not even going to cache these references. We're going to use get components. And we need a get component of audio source. And we're called the play function. And then right above this, we're going to call the stop function just to make sure audios don't overlap. So now that we have these makeshift effects, it should make building out the AI and testing more enjoyable. And don't worry if you chose to skip this for now because we're going to be reworking all this and the code still works the same. We're going to start the enemy AI simple by making it aware of the player. And since we just added some visualizations, we'll continue with that tradition and we're going to make the enemy swap out its materials when it becomes aware. So to do that first, we'll start by making a new material. We'll just duplicate the enemy material. We'll call this something like enemy aggro. We'll just change the color of it so we can see it changing. And once we've created a new material, we can just go to our enemy and we're going to add a new component. And it's going to be a new script called Enemy Awareness. So we'll just double click that to open it. And then we'll clean it up. And up at the top, we'll define that material. We'll call it Public Material. And we'll call it Agro Mat for Agro Material. Then we'll need a onTriggerEnter method. So this will return a collider called other. And then inside here, we're just going to check if other.transform.comparedTag, and this takes in a string, and we're just going to call it player. And then if it is the player, we want to get its mesh renderer. And then we're going to access the dot material property and we're going to set that material to our aggro material. Now we can save and head into Unity and then on the enemy script we can just drag in our new material. 
So we're using an on trigger enter, so our enemy also needs a trigger. We're going to use a sphere collider for our trigger, and we'll do that by checking the is trigger. So whenever our player enters this trigger, the enemy's going to become alert. So something around 8 for radius seems fine for now. So we'll collapse this for now, and then we're going to drag it up here below the rigid body with the other components. And then one last thing, we need to go to our player and make sure that the tag is tagged as player. Because that's what we're referencing in our enemy awareness script. And if we save and test, our enemy should change colors when we get too close. And it does. So let's add a little bit more functionality to this. So we'll go back into our enemy awareness script. And we still want it to change material, so we're just going to cut this real quick. And instead we're going to say is aggro equals true. So up at the top we'll define this bull. And it's going to be a public bull because other scripts are going to need reference to this. And then we're going to make an update loop. And then instead of just setting our material, whenever the trigger gets triggered, we have this bull being set instead. So we'll just say if is aggro, then we want to change our material and we'll just paste this line. So it's still detecting the player like before, but now there's a public bull that we can access or modify. So now let's make the player's gunshot make the enemy aware. So we have our player and we have our enemy. The enemy knows where the player is because of a sphere collider trigger. So similar to how our gun can shoot a ray cast and return what it hits, it can also do something called a overlap sphere, which will return an array of all the colliders inside the radius. So if these are all enemy colliders, then we can know that they have a enemy aware script. We can loop through these and enable the public bull, setting the enemies inside the radius to become aware or aggro. So back in the gun script, if you go down here in our fire method and look, this for each statement here is where our enemy takes damage and possibly could get killed. And that might cause some errors if we try to alert it after the fact. So at the very beginning of our fire statement, we're going to simulate the gunshot radius and alert any enemy in earshot. So at the top, I'll start by creating a float for the radius. We'll call it gunshot radius. For now, I'll default it to the same as range at 20. And then I'll fix these variables up a bit by setting the fire rate to 1, which it is in the expector. And we'll move it down with next time to fire. Then I'll move gunshot radius up with the other gun variables. And the layer mask is fine. And the box collider and enemy manager are both fine down there. So. so back to the fire method. We want to use physics.overlap sphere. This is going to take a origin that we're going to use transform.position for. It's going to take a radius that we're going to use gunshot radius for and then we're going to add a layer mask to make sure that these are only enemies. So we'll need to go to the top and we're going to create another layer mask like we did before. Only this time it's going to be called enemy layer mask. Okay, so the physics overlap sphere takes a array of colliders so we're going to say we want a collider array and we're going to call this enemy colliders and then back here we'll say enemy colliders equals what we had already topped out so now that we got a collection of enemy colliders we can loop through each one and alert the ones that are inside the overlap sphere to do that we need a for each statement and for the var, we're going to say enemy collider, so the singular of our collider array. In enemy colliders, and this is our collider array. And then we're going to say for each one, we want to go enemy collider dot get component, and we want the enemy awareness. And then we made that public bool, so we'll access it now, and we'll say dot is aggro equals true. We can save, and now in Unity. We need to go to our enemy object and we're going to add a new layer and we're going to call this layer enemy. Then we'll click off and then back on enemy and assign the layer. And now back on our gun script we have this enemy layer mask and we're going to select enemy. And this also messed up our raycast layer mask. 
before we were checking if it was anything but the gun so default worked for that but now we have a new enemy layer so we need default and enemy selected so that's the new everything but gun now with those set up we should test and see that the enemy becomes aware when we shoot our gun oops i killed him so let's try it again so let's back out of his personal space and hit the button and yes he becomes aggro so now let's get it where it actually moves to get the enemy to do something we're going to need your basic nav mesh setup first we need to set up where to walk the ground seems like it should be walkable the cubes at least the big one can be walkable we can select the entire environment game object and at the top of the inspector you can tick this arrow next to static and we can define this as navigation static that'll get it all ready to be baked into a nav mesh next we'll go into our enemy and give this a nav mesh agent component this is responsible for navigating the mesh it's got a few variables that you can edit here or in script and I already know that I want to increase the speed a bit so I'm gonna put perhaps 7 here now we can go to the navigation window and if you don't see this you can find it in window AI and navigation so you have this option to bake and also an agents tab detailing what it's baking for I could bake this and it'd be fine but it might take a while because the ground is so massive so I'm going to go to the ground and I'm going to decrease its scale by half and back in the navigation window I can bake now and you'll see this blue area up here and this is the area that the nav mesh agents are allowed to traverse and this can only be seen when you have the navigation window open so let's close it and now that we have our basic nav mesh it'll give us something to build our AI on top of so now we'll just make a script to chase the player once it's aware so first I'm gonna move this nav mesh agent back up here with the other components and then I'm gonna add a new component and I'm gonna call this enemy AI and then we'll double click it to open so I'm gonna just clean this up and then at the top we're gonna need a enemy awareness variable and it's gonna be private because it's on this game object and then we're gonna use a private transform for the players transform because that's what we're gonna be moving toward now let's make a start function so we can assign all these variables first off we can say enemy awareness equals get component enemy awareness and that's gonna pull it straight off of this game object and then players transform is gonna be a little different we're gonna use find object of type and we're gonna pick something that we know only the player has so we know that player move can only be found on the player so we'll set it to that and then we'll grab the transform from it so we know if the enemy is aware and we know how to find our player's position so now to set the enemy to go to the player we need to access its nav mesh agent so at the top we'll just say we want another private nav mesh agent and we want this called enemy nav mesh agent so in the start we can say enemy nav mesh agent equals get component of type nav mesh agent now in the update since we have a reference to this we can call a function from it called set destination and we want to set the destination to the players transform position and we only want to do this if the enemy is aware so we're gonna wrap this in an if statement with enemy awareness dot is aggro and if it is then we'll set the destination to players transform position and if it's not then we'll set it to our own position so now it's time to save and test and everything looks like it's going well until I get these console errors I did end up finding the problem and instead of fixing it off camera I figured I would do it now so I kept pointing at a line in my gun script where it checks for the direction from the player to the enemy I know that line of codes fine it's just that the enemy wasn't there so it was a null error I ended up checking my enemy manager and the list had way more enemies than what I was looking at. So I started looking around the enemy again and I realized the problem. The big old sphere collider that we used to detect the player is being hit with the ray that the enemies are so close together that they overlap. So there's conditions where you're inside of a collider shooting at another collider. So we're going to have to fix this by changing the method that we detect our player. 
First off, we'll get rid of all the enemies but one, and we'll remove the Sphere Collider. So back in our enemy awareness script, we know that our on trigger function is not going to work anymore, so we need another way to find our player. We're going to do it like we did before, and at the top we're going to create a new private transform called players transform. And then our start function will say players transform equals find object of type, and then once again we know that player move is on our player, and then we'll get our transform off of it. So we'll do this using a distance check. So we'll create a var dist and we'll set this equal to vector3.distance and a is going to be transform position and our b is going to be our players transform dot position. And now that we got the distance we can say if our dist is greater than and then we need a new float so at the top we'll say public float and this is going to be awareness radius. And back down here we'll say if distance is less than awareness radius then we can set is aggro to true and go down here and delete the on trigger method and just like that we've created another method to get our status so now we can save and test and see if this method is going to work but first let's default this awareness radius to 8 and also make sure that it's set in the inspector so then we can play test and now it looks to me like all our systems are playing well together. So this is it for the basic AI and we'll be doing more to it later. So I hope to catch you in part two. Spawn camp out.